The goal of this short video today is to dig a little bit deeper into that my, myostatin protein and figure out the relationship between the myostatin protein and the actual chromosomes that we know are found in cells. So just a really brief history of these heavily muscled cattle. Um, they were actually first discovered in Belgium in the late 1800s. And we, like we've discussed in class before, we know bigger muscles are going to equal more meat, which of course is going to lead to more money for the uh, farmers that are raising the cattle. And um, the farmers in the United States also recognized this. So by the 1970s, we definitely had a lot of cattle farmers here in the United States that were also raising these really heavily muscled cattle um, for this greater profit. So myostatin, the myostatin protein, was actually discovered in 1997. Um, and really, the, our first work in that was, was via the mice. So scientists learned a whole bunch about myostatin um, by working with these uh, large mice. And what they did was they actually made changes to the specific parts of the chromosome called genes. So in class, we noticed that chromosomes have all these bands, and these are where the genes are. And so we have been using symbols, um, colors, and shapes to kind of designate different bands. So we can see, you know, we've got this, this blue band on each of the pairs of chromosomes, green and orange. And then um, the way that kind of uh, plays out is we have forms of these different forms of these these genes and we can see the blue band we've got a circle form and we've got a star band or a star form and um, again the, the scientists were really kind of honing in on this gene that they knew was related specifically to the myostatin protein so they kind of messed around with those genes and they were able to um, breed mice that had the partial myostatin um, form, so the one that's holy and it doesn't fit into the receptors, and they got the big muscled mice. So it turns out there's two forms of the myostatin gene, and these forms are called alleles. So this is an allele, this is one allele, this is called allele A, which leads to the typical myostatin protein, so the one that's not holy. And the second form we're going to call it allele B, and we're going to represent that by a star because it's different, and that leads to the partial myostatin protein. So when we look at what the alleles say in chromosomes, that is something called a genotype. So phenotype is what the, the trait looks like, and the genotype is what the actual alleles say. And remember, we're talking about getting one allele from an egg and one from a sperm when that um, fertilized fertilization happens. So with the myostatin alleles, you can have three combinations. So the first one would be two of the A alleles, and we're going to represent it by having two um, large A's, and that's going to lead to your typical um, myostatin proteins, which will then lead to typical muscles. Uh, the second combination would be two allele B's, so you would have the partial myostatin proteins, which would be the extra big muscles, and we'll represent that with two big Bs. And finally, we'll have one allele of each, so an allele of A and allele B. So we have one typical and one partial myostatin protein, which we know leads to medium muscles. So in addition to kind of um, doing lots of experiments with mice, uh, scientists have also changed the genes of some other animals as well to get extra big muscles. So those include rabbits and goats and fish. Turns out, though, that there are many animals that have the extra big muscle gene naturally without, without scientists changing that, and that would be cattle, sheep, and dogs. And remember that on our driving question board, one of our thoughts was maybe these cattle were genetically modified. Um, we did not genetically modify them. The, this gene and those uh, myostatin proteins that cause extra big muscles uh, actually occur naturally in the cattle.